we are going to Hobby Fish Farm in Tamil. It is around 90 kilometers from our place. We are going to buy some Baramundi fish from the fish farm. Some there, no? Fred and Glennis were so friendly and they showed us their garden and veggies. Fred picked a fresh carrot and beetroot for me. <laughs> you want to take that one home? Yes, you can take that one home. I don't know how old they are. We'll wash it for you. Eh? That's quite all right. Circling aquaculture, so the water goes around, 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 and all I do is, is use biological filtration to to clean the water, and the filter takes out the solid waste or, or the fish poop. So then there's lots of there'll be lots of little fish in here. So we'll see if we can catch a couple of those. Yeah. So these are little tiny barramundi. See, they're all little barramundi. See? So they're all next year's food. How often do you feed them? I feed them. I better turn that off. Uh, you can feed them uh, as many times as they like to eat. So it all depends how fast you want them to grow. Uh, water temperature is a main driver for it to grow quickly, so warmer the water, uh, the faster they grow. In the, in the winter, I've got a big heater that's outside. It heats these 
tanks here. The barramundi I buy is little babies. And I normally do rainbow trout, but they're not ready until uh, maybe August, September. And I buy them in as little ones as well. You see, you might not be able to see it, but the water's not that good. This is the breeding pond. Um, because it's overcast, there's not much sun, it's hard to see. Quietly just look straight over and straight down. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> That's a big Murray Park right there. Yeah. They're really a metre long to But you won't, uh, same thing with the sun shining on it, you can see them, but yeah, with the water, it's very dark. Them. So the pellets, so they're for the big fish, right? And then the little fish buy the small ones. So you can fit them in your mouth. A bit like if you buy an apple that's too big, you buy it smaller, don't you? So that's how that works. And then we just, yeah, we just feed them every day and. I don't use any chemical or, or anything, they just naturally grow. That's why some of them are big and some of them are little. I don't, I let them grow naturally. I've been, I've been playing around with fish for 28 years. So, yeah, long time. So, yeah, started off in dams out in the paddocks and brought it all in after a few years, so, yeah. Well, so. They're a bit bigger, aren't they? Okay. So that, they were that size last year. Yeah? Okay. So they're quite a big fish. big ones, like this one here, this is where I got them from this morning. I don't think I'll catch one, no, I might. There you go. So there. So they're the same. Aquaponics works well on, uh, and if you go big scale, you have to have big filters and, and what they call reed beds and all that. So, so you can do one or the other, you can do one well or do both average. So to make it viable, um, if, if you're looking at it commercially, it's not too much, the, the big aquaponics places are really, haven't got a lot of fish. So they do hydroponics and then, and then if there's left over they can do fish and all that. You have to be careful of your fish waste not being used up and going back into your system and that creates ammonia so you're not doing one complete system that you get 500 fish and you know a ton of vegetables it can be done but it's probably the cost outweighs the benefit you either do one so we use the water but it's not aquaponically it's like the lemons and all that get watered 